It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. We'll teach you how to shoot. We'll teach you how to light. Teach you how to mic and edit right. Each second Saturday, there's a free training. From programs on display to focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. Second Saturdays at 12 o'clock in Studio A. Hello, I'm media trainer Maxwell Brown, and I'd like to welcome you to the TCTV Training Show. Every second Saturday, we offer a free workshop open to everyone in the community concerning some aspect of media production here at our studio at 440 Yager Way. To learn more about community media and how to get involved, please visit tctv.net. Today, I'm very excited to be talking about a subject I'm particularly passionate about, and that is the 3D program Blender. So what is Blender? Well, Blender is a free, open source 3D modeling, rendering, compositing software, also a nonlinear editor and a game engine. And it could do a whole lot more. It's been used by diverse groups from major motion picture studios to the medical field, uh, to architects, scientists, and of course, artists. So what's Blender capable of? Let's take a look at their website for the information. OK, so this is blender.org. And you're free to come here. And if you'll notice that at the top of the page, they say right here, Blender is a free and open source software, free to use for any purpose forever. And that's important. We're going to talk about that philosophy a little bit more. But let's see what Blender can do. So photorealistic rendering, yep. <clears throat> Modeling, yep. Materials, using a node editor, which is extremely powerful, oh yeah. Fast rigging, meaning that it's easy to put your models into action. Uh, animation, sculpting, UV unwrapping, that's kind of a complicated one. A compositor like After Effects. Simulations, physics simulations like liquid, smoke, hair, cloth, rigid bodies and particles. The game engine, camera and object tracking. Uh, Community-made extensions that can uh, add all sorts of functionality to your program. The nonlinear video editor, like I described, like Final Cut or um, Adobe Premiere, uh, can import and export um, any kind of image or video or even uh, other 3D programs. So it's a good intermediary if you need that. And a completely uh, customizable interface. What I said before, uh, what is open source? What is open source? What is free open source software? Free open source software <clears throat> is a philosophy of letting the community develop the software without proprietary copyrights. These are all made with Blender. This one is, uh, was one of the first ones. They, just, they developed the hair module in this one. Uh, Sintel is a beautiful motion picture where they developed some fire and the photorealistic renderer named Cycles. Um, this one came after that. And let's go ahead and watch one of these open movies so we can see what Blender is capable of. This one is two minutes, and it's pretty fun. So I'm going to push play here. Hopefully everything works good. Okay, that was pretty fun. So that's a great example of what talented people can do with a free open source program like Blender. Then let's take a look at the program. Okay, so when we open up Blender, this is what we see. Usually, here, I'm just I'm going to restart this real quick. I want to show you guys, when you first open it up, it shows you the splash screen. 
Okay, so when you first open it up, you always see this splash screen. And it's kind of neat because this, every version, they put a new um, piece of art from somebody in the community, and it just highlights something cool that's going on in Blender world. It has some helpful links. If you want to donate money to the cause, you want to see who made it. Um, it'll also have, over here, we'll have um, previous sessions that you've been working on to quickly open it up. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and so this is the default view that you'll see when you open up Blender. Um, it's kind of funny that most tutorials you'll see online say, the first thing that everybody says is delete the default cube because this is just how it looks for everybody and so they want it to be uniform for the entire world so that it just looks like this, it's always looked like this and it's kind of a joke. <clears throat> People uh, often make the funny joke of, uh, here I'll just, they go, here that's my first art of Blender. <laughs> And people are pretty, it's kind of cute. Okie dokie, so, so what are we looking at? So <clears throat> the default view, this is the 3D view port. And <clears throat> Blender's kind of weird in the sense that everything, you want to click on everything with the right mouse button. <clears throat> to select things, you use the right mouse button. It's, it's just how it is. But you remember how I said everything's customizable? And by that, I mean you can grab this corner, we can make as many windows as we want, we can have as many views as we need, all that stuff. <clears throat> but completely customizable, and uh, do, 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 do. we can make as many as we want. And then we go, uh-oh, I screwed up. So you can come back to the default window, and it should work. Doop, uh-oh, of course. Um, let's see here. This is kind of tricky. People get confused about this sometimes, is that you can drag this cor these corners to make more windows, but then you go, oh, how do I get rid of these things? But you can grab it, as I say so. <laughs> Give me that. Come on. There. Yeah, so you see it'll make this kind of arrow, and it'll let you get rid of it. <clears throat> And there it is, there's this the guy. Bloop. Okay, so we're back to the default view. So you, you select things, this is the camera. You can select the camera with the right mouse button. Here's a light that they give you by default. And here's our default cube. You can uh, navigate and rotate around by holding down the middle uh, scroll wheel, the third mouse button. And I really recommend you get a uh, three button mouse as opposed to using the trackpad because Blender is uh, pretty, Except, um, likes to use the scroll wheel and all the buttons, so it makes it much harder when you have this uh, trackpad. Also, I'll say this at the beginning, is that Blender is um, known as for v being very fast in its use. So you can model and can make things very fast and quickly. But the reason you can do that is because there's all sorts of keyboard shortcuts. And so most of the time you're gonna be moving around here and that's like, so, uh, Alternative programs like Cinema 4D, they'll have all these buttons and all these windows um, that you have to like hold, go into there and find there, and it makes it really slow and confusing, but Blender tries to put everything that you need in front of your face because Blender is for artists. It's part of its pure design philosophy. Um, let's see, so <clears throat> let's talk about what we're looking at. So there's all sorts of different tools over here in this sidebar, all these tabs. We can see over here it says tools, create. And so we can create all sorts of primitive objects, planes, cubes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and here I'll show you guys. This, this is Suzanne. Suzanne's been with Blender since the beginning. And uh, she is our uh, mascot. She's a monkey. <clears throat> And uh, it's a kind of a default object so you can test out your materials and you can t test out lighting. You can see that it just has enough, uh, enough polygons and corners and stuff to be able to check it out. And I don't know why. Okay, so here's Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Okay, so as you see, uh, my hand is on the keyboard and it's, I'm pretty much navigating entirely with this. So, I can use the middle mouse button to rotate around, and then if I hold down shift, now I can scroll up and go sideways, and I can zoom in and out with the middle mouse button. <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so this is the main 3D window. This area changes depending on what context we're in, and I'll talk about that in a second. By default, it has this timeline. This is a timeline for animation down here at the bottom. And you can see that there's transport controls down here, a little play and fast forward. Shows us what frame we're currently at right at the bottom. It says we're at 11. So start is one, end is 250 frames, and we can change everything that we want to about that. Um, over here, by default, it has a um, sort of an outline of our scene. It shows that there's render layers, we have our world, there's a camera in there, there's a light, and there's Suzanne. Um, <clears throat> underneath that, by default, it has this area, which has all sorts of different um, options, and we'll spend a lot of time in here. This first button is the render button, and this has all the options for our rendering. So I'll give you guys a, a quick tip here. <clears throat> if you want your renders to look good um, right out the box, you're going to want to turn up this resolution to 100. And if, you're, if you really want to make it look good, you can turn it to 200%, which I don't even know if 200% is possible, but 200% of resolution makes it look really good. So this 1920 by 1080 by default, that's high definition. Um, this is the render button if you wanted to render it. So before we get into rendering, I guess I'll talk about the two different render modes that um, <clears throat> Blender has. Blender by, originally started with Blender internal, and that's what this is by default. You can see up here it says Blender render. That's the, by default. And so Blender render is different than Cycles render. Cycles is the photorealistic renderer, and it has a bit of completely different math involved with it to make your images look photorealistic. Blender render uses a, um, see, Cycles is a, is a path tracer, so basically it shoots light at the object and receives it like a camera would. Uh, Blender render does a completely other math, and I'll show you, let's see what it looks like. So we got Suzanne, and let's see how this works. So this is what it looks like with Blender internal. And I need to, it's kind of weird to do this with a, this laptop, but let's see here. Okay, so, yeah, that's the problem is that, oops. So people get, people go, oh, well, Blender's not good for new users because if they push the number, any of these numbers, then everything in their scene disappears. So here's another quick tip is that, all these numbers here, one through nine, these are just different um, layers. And if you accidentally push uh, one of these numbers and everything disappears, just go ahead and push number one again and your, and your scene will come right back up. So the problem I'm having is that I don't use this laptop, so things are a little bit confusing. But the camera should see it. And so we have Blender Eternal, and we can see that <clears throat> It kind of looks like old 3D, you know, like 90s 3D. It doesn't look really photorealistic per se. But if we take cycles and we ask it to render it, <clears throat> you'll see it kind of, you can see more shadows and you can see more things happening. It's a little bit, a little bit different. And most people use cycles now and cycles is awesome, but it also takes a lot more computer power. So you're gonna want a stronger computer um, to use cycles. But they both have their uses, and they're both very capable rendering engines. OK, so the first tab um, has our rendering options. If we wanted to uh, render out an animation, this is where we could do that. <clears throat> and oh yeah, the quick tip. So we could turn off compression, and then you come down to sampling. Sampling is how many times it's um, taking a picture, or how many times it's shooting its rays at the object. So the Typically, people say that the higher your samples are, the better your render is going to look. <clears throat> you start getting diminishing returns around 1,500 samples. Um, and if you're not getting good renders with that many samples, then you're, doing, you're gonna wanna check your other settings. But typically, you're gonna wanna, you know, at least 100 samples. So the more samples you have, the more time it takes, and you know, the slower it's gonna go. <clears throat> okay, so what else we got? We have a scene tab. This has got all sorts of information about our layers and our scene. This is, um, uh, what is this one? 
This is the scene, this one, oh, this is the render layers, this is the scene, this is the world, <clears throat> so we can go ahead and give our world a sky if we wanted to, so our, um, I go, this has a surface of background, and I click the C, you can see this color, it's kind of small, but it says color. I'm gonna go ahead and pick sky texture, <clears throat> and down here, we can change all of our, the ways we can see in our viewport, so we can see the wireframe mode if we want that one, we can see it's solid, if we had a texture, we can see what the texture, and we can see it rendered. So this is kind of like the live rendering. Um, so you're gonna, if you wanna see what it looks like live, you can go ahead and hit rendered. So we have a sky here, and we can go ahead and you know, make it dark time, maybe make it evening. But it's, kinda, it's a global illumination, so it's kind of like having a giant light out there that's lighting everything, kind of like the real world. You can see we can kind of go around and see what's going on. <coughs> <clears throat> so without getting too boring about talking about polygons and vertices, um, let's just, I'll just say that 3D uses polygons and uh, it's made out of vertices. So what is a vertice? Here, I'll show you. <clears throat> Vertex is one of these points. That is one vertex. Um, and so here, maybe, so what I did was I switched from object mode to edit mode. So if you were trying to add objects, like if I wanted to add a sphere here, <clears throat> you can add an object. So I have two, two objects. And I'm pushing S for scale to make things bigger and smaller. And um, selecting and moving around. But if I wanted to edit this object, so I want to edit this sphere, I come into edit mode. And now I can do all sorts of stuff. Like I can grab one of these vertex. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn on proportional editing and I'm pushing G to move. And so now I can edit our object. So if I want, this is how you start doing your modeling. So if you wanted to make a uh, egg, <laughs> that's how you'd kind of go about that. So <clears throat> it's good to know that object mode, you can um, move around individual objects, but if you wanted to edit them, you need to come into edit mode. And you'll see in here we have sculpt mode. This is where we can do live sculpting if we want to see what that looks like. So on sculpt mode, <clears throat> you typically want to look at it solid. And this is kind of a cool new feature. It's called dyno to or dyn topo, but it's dynamic topology, <clears throat> which means live sculpting. So the tool you're going to want to use, you can come up to this brush here, and you can grab this snake hook, which was previously pretty useless, but now it's pretty awesome. Um, so I turned on um, dynamic topology, and I'm gonna make this subdivide edges, and let me get, give it some smooth shading. And now you can see we can just do live sculpting and just make kind of cool, weird objects. And so this also has a symmetry. You can come down to the symmetry and you can change that. You can turn on and off symmetry if you want symmetry. You can have that, or if you wanted it on the Z scale. So I, I don't know, did I talk about, I guess I should talk about that, is that 3D, in the 3D world where <clears throat> we have the X and Y, where X is um, horizontal and Y is vertical, and Z is forward and backward in, in space, or up and down, if you will. So, <clears throat> so we have you know, X, Y, and then Z. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> so there's a couple of tabs in here. This is the object tab. This lets you just do, uh, make more precise. And everything that you see here could be keyframed, which means you can animate all of this stuff if you wanted to animate the location. Uh, another quick tip is that you just hit I, and then that sets a keyframe. And you can see down here in the timeline that there's this yellow mark here, which means there's a keyframe there. And then I, here, I need to get out of sculpt mode, back to object mode. So I, I keyframed its location, and then I moved forward in time, and I moved this over here. I hit I, keyframed it, so you can see now we have animation. So anything that you see here, you can push the letter I, and it'll keyframe it. And if you push I in the viewport, it's pretty cool because it brings up this keyframe menu where you can keyframe location, location rotation, location, rotation, and scale. You can keyframe whatever you want, <clears throat> and it just gives you a little bit more um, versatility. 
A um, couple other tabs here. This modifier tab, this is gonna come in pretty handy if you guys get into this program. Um, this is where all sorts of cool new kind of modules are where we can generate arrays, we can um, cast it into different things. Uh, one that people often use is subdivide surface, which is kind of a new um, feature, which is, so <clears throat> remember I said there's vertices. I'm gonna come back into wireframe. So you can see that this has not so many vertices. It's kind of low polygon, which is good because it goes faster, but sometimes you need more detail and you want things to look good, but you don't want to slow down your computer. So we can put on this um, subsurf or uh, subdivide surfaces modifier, and then you'll see, and check this out, you'll watch, watch when I turn this up. It goes twice as many, twice as many as that, and that's just more levels of detail. But it's not actually creating geometry it's just giving us that geometry to use. It doesn't have to have it until we start to render, which makes it super helpful and super nice. So we can watch, so I can turn it on, off, on, off. So when we have this many, you can see up here, on the top here, it says how many verts we have, vertices. It has 517,000 vertex. So that's a lot. And if you're using something for like a game um, element, that's way too many because it's going to slow down your game, it's going to slow down your computer, so you want to have as few of those as possible. And you can see I come back down to zero, and then we're back down to 13,000 vertex and 27,000 faces. Alrighty, so a couple other tabs. This is the material tab, so this is, we're going to spend a lot of time here, <clears throat> and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So that we don't even have a material here, but I'm going to create a new material. And here we can change its color, right? So materials are what affects the outside of our object. And so remember I said that Blender has a lot of different modes. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up this, uh, this timeline because we don't really need to see the timeline. And check out these, you see this little uh, box here and these little box here and this one here, these are all the same. And this lets us change what we're looking at. So Right here, it is as the timeline view, and I want to see the node editor. So here it is, node editor. And so you can see that it gives us two nodes already, the diffuse, which is um, the kind of matte um, shader, and a material output. And so we can add m more nodes. So let's say if I wanted it to look, have a uh, stripes on there, I can give it this wave texture, take this into here, and now you can see it affects this. So this node editor is extremely powerful, and I think you guys might remember seeing this in the, uh, uh, the, that Star Wars render that you can make giant node trees to make your uh, render look awesome. So diffuse is sort of the matte, and you can, you'll notice that, <clears throat> oh, come on. Um, so if I wanted a different shader, like a glossy shader, you can grab that. I take this output and this to the input, or we don't need that. We can see now it's shiny. That's our glossy one. So if you wanted to have kind of a plastic looking material, you do something like this. You can grab the mix shader. So this takes two shaders and mixes them together. I'm taking glossy and I'm gonna take a diffuse shader and I'm gonna mix these together because plastic kind of has a matte, but it also is kind of shiny, right? So <clears throat> I'm gonna take down this glossy roughness. So I just want it to be kind of shiny. And you can see that I'll make the, the object kind of black, but it has a, uh, and maybe it's kind of hard to see here, so we'll put, but you can see we kind of have a, uh, kind of have a plastic looking material there. So all you have to do is you mix two shaders, you mix the glossy and diffuse, and you kind of got a, uh, kind of got a plastic material going on. Okay, so let's see. That's the material tab, and this is the node editor. You're, if you're gonna be using uh, Blender, you're gonna be spending a lot of time with these two things. Um, textures, remember we have a wave texture, you can make your own textures. This is a cool one, this is the particles. 
So this is where we do things like hair and you know fire and whatever you want flying around. So if we wanted it to be hairy, I can change this emitter to hair. And now I got a hairy monkey. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of long there, but I'll just shorten that up. So, you know, it's not perfect, but you can see how it, we can do hair pretty much out the box. Hair Dynamics, that lets it move with animation. That's cool. So let's talk about the other modes real quick, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. So I wanted to point out that, remember I said that it has a uh, nonlinear video editor? Well, here it is. So you can throw in video clips in here. You can pull this down and change this to the view of it. And we can start editing our videos. So we make our animation. We render out our animation. We want to edit it together. We don't have to go to any other program. We can just stay in Blender. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Um, this is the UV image editor. So if you want to do things like Photoshop or compositing, like taking multiple layers or adding visual effects, you could come in here and do that. <clears throat> and you can use nodes for that. Let's see. That's the, uh, what else do we got? Logic editor, that's for your game. So this is where you can add if this hits this, then this thing blows up, that kind of thing, if you wanted to make a game. We took a look at Blender. So here's some helpful links that uh, if you wanted to get some more tutorial action going on, you could go to blenderguru.com. That guy is uh, Andrew Price, and he's, uh, he's really smart, and he gives out some great information, free information. Uh, he's also trying to charge for some stuff here and there, but you can learn a lot of stuff for free. Blender Nation is another one. It's a blog that um, has tutorials and links to whatever's going on in the Blender world. Um, whoop, whoop, whoop. Sorry. Uh, the subreddit uh, on reddit.com, the Blender is a, is a cool place to go. You can ask questions and uh, you see what the people in the community are doing. I'm an active member of this. And uh, matter of fact, no, I'm an active member of the of this community. So if uh, my name is uh, Mr. Light Fantastic on there, don't tell anybody. I probably shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> but if you're on there and you see me, you can say hi. And here, I'll just brag a little bit, real quick, because I can. You can see that November winner of the monthly Blender contest is who? Mr. Light Fantastic. Yes. So I uh, let's hit this. I won the uh, November contest for this alien architecture render that I made, and I'm pretty happy about that. It's uh, not the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, but I knocked it out in my spare time, and apparently the community liked it enough to make me the winner for the month, so I won the internet that day. I'm pretty happy. Um, let's see here. Um, CG Cookie, that's not just for Blender, but it has a lot of useful Blender tutorials. Um, CG Masters also has awesome Blender tutorials, so I recommend you guys check those out. And uh, just to show you guys, if you're wondering what I do, this is uh, my Tumblr, Maxwell from Earth, <clears throat> and here's some renders that I've made. This was for this uh, band that wanted this graphics. You can do some abstract stuff too. I like to do sort of mm, abstract, minimal weirdness. Um, this guy was from Rick and Morty. He's a Rick and Morty fan art there. You guys might remember that guy seen that show. Some other guys, um, some art. This is, this is the first render that I was actually did that I was pretty proud of. <clears throat> and this is a uh, lunch. So it's got some sandwiches. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I uh, figured it out and I was pretty proud of it. And I thought that all of looks really cool, don't it? <clears throat> all right. <laughs> I hope you learned something new about this amazing program and sparked an interest in 3D, open source software, and online communities. Blender is not only a state-of-the-art media program, it is a community, just like TCTV. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. We'll teach you how to shoot. We'll teach you how to light. Teach you how to mic and edit right. Each second Saturday, there's a free training from programs on display to focusing and framing. It's the TCTV training show. The TCTV training show. You're watching TCTV. It's the training show. The TCTV training show. Second Saturdays at 12 o'clock in Studio A.